Hi, welcome to the Caregiver's Guide. Today we're going to talk about the value of partnership. And as always, uh, this information should not be substituted for advice of appropriately qualified licensed practitioners of medicine, psychology, law, or financial planning. On the expanded disability scale, we're looking at a level zero, which is still normal capability. Today we're going to be discussing how solid your partnership is and how to cope with rocks in your journey and how to manage stressful situations. The example I want to start with is the story Enemy of the Gates, which was a film in 2001, and it was based on a 1973 book uh, by William Craig, Enemy of the Gates, uh, The Battle for Stalingrad. So it was based in 1942-1943 in World War II, and there were two snipers. One was a Soviet sniper, Vasily, who was actually in conflict with um, a, a German sniper, Major Koenig, and in the movie, the uh, the love interest was Tania, who was a beautiful Soviet um, woman who could have gone and had more of like an office work, but she chose to become a sniper. And with any good movie, there's a love triangle, which was with uh, Commissioner Dan Love. He was on the Soviet side. And he was basically on the administrative front of the of the war, and he was trying to get Tania to stay in the safe zone, you know, working with a translation. So he was talking to Vasily and said, "I've been such a fool, Vasily. A man will always be a man. There is no new man. We tried so hard to create a society that was equal, where there would be nothing to envy your neighbor." But there's always something to envy, a smile, a friendship, something that you don't have and want to appropriate. In this world, even a Soviet one, there will always be rich and poor, rich in gifts, poor in gifts, rich in love and poor in love. And I think it's so pertinent to look at that from a caregiver's side of the equation because you might feel that things aren't fair and it isn't a perfect world and you can see other people have love that you might not be feeling um, in the same same respect. Really the resources for this is just watching the movie. It was a fantastic movie and it definitely gave me a better perspective of life and whenever you sit there and, and kind of look at your situation you realize like there's definitely other people that would trade places with you. So the point of this topic really stems from a story within the story of the movie. And it starts with Tania, who was explaining to Vasily how she wanted to be on the front lines versus taking the translator job where she'd be safer. And she was explaining that the Nazis were running out of ammunition and they marched a bunch of couples with her parents onto a bridge and tied their hands together before asking which person wanted the bullet and then tossing the couples off of the bridge. Therefore, one person would get the bullet and then the other person would be suffering while they were being dragged down by the weight of the person who was dying. So as a caregiver, it's really one of those stories that sort of will resonate with you. So in evaluating that, when you have normal health, it's really important to define what you would do for each other in sickness and health. And especially when you say that, those vows, you might not really understand how bad somebody can become sick and what it takes to take care of them and determine like what you would do if somebody gets in a car accident or falls extremely ill and define your partnership on different levels. So with the Plan Do Check Act, you want to always look at what your definition of sickness really means. And if you have an opportunity, take a little bit of time to volunteer, maybe, you know, once or twice to take care of somebody that has dementia or Alzheimer's or has you know a, a severe disability so you can understand your limits and what it takes to actually take care of somebody in that condition um, and then also you know it's always good to reciprocate so see how your partner takes care of you understand their limits understand what they would do for you and where you know the value of your, your partnership um, and then check on a daily basis to see, you know, how do you guys respond to each other on, you know, on good days, on bad days, and, and your ability to forgive each other um, and move forward when things do get rocky. 
and then respond and don't react. If you have somebody that has limitations where they say, yeah, I, I can't do this. Um, you know, I actually am in the, you know, a situation like that. I, you know, I, it's, you know, a common thing, like you would not do this for me. So I'm doing the best that I can. Um, you need to have a plan. If you know that your partner or significant other or your, you know, your children or whoever that you might think is going to be there for you really isn't. So you might want to make sure that you have, uh, you know, another, another option available, whether or not it's, it's paid or unpaid or, or anything like that. So in conclusion, based on that story where you feel like you're treading water and you're trying to support somebody who can't swim and can't help you, I want to wrap up with a quote by Tamara Weber that no matter what grief or loss takes place, most of life flows on all around us as though nothing's changed. At some point in our sorrow, we each make a choice to sink or swim, and there is no alternative. And with that, I just want you to think about what you would do if you're facing that situation. You know, what can you do as far as, as save yourself, um, you know, creating life preservers or, you know, metaphorically, obviously, um, and, and really make sure that you have a solid plan for the next you know, five to 10 years, because sometimes sicknesses do last for an extremely long time. So I hope that helps and please hit like and subscribe. And I hope that you will be able to join me on future casts. Thanks.